This is the PlayStation Portal, the brand new handheld gaming accessory for your PlayStation 5. And in this video, I'm going to show you the good and the bad. Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Milan here at Infinite Life and let's get into this video. So I've had the PlayStation Portal for about 6 weeks and I have some thoughts. So essentially, the PS Portal is a remote play accessory for your PlayStation 5. And so before we go any further into this video, let's just make it clear so that there's no confusion as to what the Portal is. This is an accessory for your PlayStation 5, not a standalone gaming console. I mean, it is literally in the official name of the device, the PlayStation Portal Remote Player. Now that that's out of the way, I've been a fan of PlayStation Remote Play for a long time, and I've been using Remote Play for many years now, so I knew exactly what I was getting into and what the capabilities and limitations of the device could be, well, at least for the most part. So seeing the PlayStation Portal for the first time, the first thing you're going to say is, well, it's just a DualSense controller cut in half with the screen in the middle. And yeah, that's exactly what it is. And honestly, that's one of the things I love about the PlayStation Portal. The second you pick it up, you're familiar with the controller. You know exactly where the buttons are, the layout, the haptics, and the response. It only took minutes to set up, and after that, I was gaming on the PlayStation Portal in seconds. Now one difference I did notice about the PlayStation Portal versus a regular DualSense controller controller are the analog sticks. Now I'm not sure why, but Sony went with smaller thumbstick heads on the PlayStation Portal. Again, I don't know why they made this decision. If you guys have any thoughts or inputs, leave it in the comments section below. But ultimately, it only took a few minutes to adjust to these differences and it didn't change my gaming experience whatsoever. Now the 8 inch 1080p LCD screen that comes with the PlayStation Portal is surprisingly good. Might I even say beautiful at times. It does struggle in its deep black at times, but that's common with all LCD screens. But honestly, it doesn't take away from the graphical capabilities of this device. The actual vibrancy and brightness of the screen is actually really good for a $200 device. Now when the device was initially launched, a lot of people were harping on the fact that it was only a 1080p screen and not 4K. But let's be honest, it's an 8 inch screen and the remote play application caps out at 1080p resolution anyway, so having a 4K display would be absolutely useless on this device. Now you're going to get the same adaptive and rumble features as the regular DualSense controller. I have noticed that the rumble motors in the PlayStation Portal do make an audible noise when they are in high motion, almost like a clicking sound when the rumble motor are spinning. But this is not always the case. But I'm not sure if this is only my device or others are experiencing this as well. So to help fix this, I actually ended up reducing the vibration strength to compensate for the noise. But still, all of this leads to an awesome mobile gaming experience, especially when it comes to single player games, action adventure titles, and story driven experiences like Spider-Man 2 or Final Fantasy 16. And for an on the go gaming device, the battery life is actually surprisingly good. Because there's no actual processing happening on the device itself and it's streaming its content from your PlayStation 5, I'm averaging about 4-5 to five hours of gameplay on a full charge. And if you combine your PlayStation Portal with a PlayStation Plus yearly subscription service, your digital library will continue to grow over time, leading to a nearly endless option of games to be played on the go. Now with the lowest tier PlayStation Plus subscription, you'll usually end up getting about three games a month to add to your catalog. Now I have the middle tier, known as Extra, which provides even more titles each month from their gaming catalog. It is literally an endless list of games that you can play on your PlayStation Portal. So we covered a lot of good stuff about the PlayStation Portal remote player. The feel of the build quality, the controller, the screen, and the haptics, and the battery life, and the gaming catalog. But now, let's cover some of the bad. Because yeah, the PlayStation Portal is not perfect. There are some compromises, and this is where the PlayStation Portal will be a make or break for many people. And a lot of the bad comes down to one thing, the Wi-Fi. So number one, right off the bat, if you do not have Wi-Fi, the PlayStation Portal will not work. It is literally useless. It is a remote play device. No onboard processing is happening. So no Wi-Fi, no gaming. Now majority of the time, I'm using the PlayStation Portal at home. If the TV is being used by someone else, or if I want to play while in bed away from the TV. Now there's one thing I want to make clear, because there was a lot of confusion and misinformation about the Portal when it first launched. You do not have to be in the same Wi-Fi connection as your PlayStation 5 to be able to connect your Portal. You can take the device with you to 
a friend or family member's house or use any open public Wi-Fi. As long as there's a strong and stable connection, you can connect with your PlayStation Portal. You can even use mobile data as well. And just remember, mobile gaming does take up a lot of data, so be careful if you are on a limited data plan. Okay. So to go along with the Wi-Fi, you also have to make sure that your speeds are high enough as well. Now the official PlayStation website recommends broadband internet with at least 5 megabytes, but for the best remote play experience, high speed internet of at least 15 megabytes per second is what the recommendation is. Okay, but let's be honest here. The faster your internet speed is, the better your connection and the better your experience will be. Now you have to remember that this is gonna be important on both ends. Now having a good download speed is important, but the other important thing is, is to make sure your upload speed is also very strong because the remote play information needs to be uploaded to the internet and then downloaded to your PlayStation portal and then back. This will help reduce the most amount of latency as possible and so if you are not on the same wi-fi network as your playstation 5 you need to make sure that the internet your portal is connected to is also very fast now one thing that's going to affect any internet connection is how many devices are connected to that local network so having too many wi-fi connected devices can affect your playstation portal experience so devices are splitting that shared resources for streaming if others are streaming 4k movies or downloading files that can severely affect your playstation portal experience Experience. Now one of the major omissions with the PlayStation Portal is the lack of Bluetooth. Now Sony being Sony, they went with their own proprietary wireless connection system. So unfortunately, you cannot connect your Bluetooth headphones like your AirPods or any other over-the-top headphones via Bluetooth to the PlayStation Portal. So the solution to this problem is you either use your cabled headphones or you use Sony's PlayStation Pulse Explorer earbuds, but those come in at another $200. Now the Pulse Explorers will connect directly to the PlayStation Portal. They are also compatible with the PlayStation 5, but to do so, you have to use the included dongle. I mean, ultimately, it's not that big of a deal to use wired headphones, but most of us have moved away from wired headphones for majority of our devices. So let's say we're traveling and we take our PlayStation Portal with us. We stop in at a coffee shop, bookstore, or even our hotel. Once we connect it to local Wi-Fi, what is the first thing that pops up? A login screen, where you need to provide an email address and maybe a password to connect to the Wi-Fi. Well, good luck doing that with the PlayStation Portal, because one of the greatest oversights of the PlayStation Portal is this scenario, is the lack of a web browser to access the login screen for public Wi-Fi. So ultimately, you are out of luck and you cannot and will not be able to use use public Wi-Fi. So some of the other things that irk me about the PlayStation Portal, and I mentioned this earlier, the smaller analog sticks. And again, I just don't get why Sony did this and did not go with the standard size analog sticks. I don't really see the benefit with the smaller ones. And I feel like these start to hurt your thumbs the longer you use the PlayStation Portal. Again, this is a small gripe, but I just don't get why. Now, one thing that affects me with the PlayStation Portal is how you like to have access to your media and you like to buy physical copies of the games, then you are going to be at a disadvantage advantage when it comes to the PlayStation Portal if you are outside your own home. Physical game discs mean that you have to switch one disc out for another to play a different game on your portal because your console will only authenticate whatever game disc is inside the drive. So if you want to switch games, then you will have to switch the CD out. And if you are traveling, well, ultimately you are stuck with the game that is inside of your disc drive. And this situation is made worse if you aren't on PlayStation Plus to have access to their digital library. So yes, for me, I do prefer physical copies over digital, but also having PlayStation Plus Extra gives me so many digital games that I can switch in and out from. Now the last thing I'll say, and this is going to be a small gripe, but the PlayStation Portal does not come with a protective case or even having a first party option bundle to have a protective case. With how slim the Portal is and with how large the screen is, I was initially hesitant to take the Portal anywhere because I didn't want to bend or crack the screen. Now most other handheld devices like the Switch or the Steam Deck don't come with a protective case as well, but it would have been nice to have an option available. I mean, the DualSense Elite came with a protective case to hold its accessories, and that doesn't even have a screen on it. So I know we spent a lot of time on the negatives of this device, and some of them towards the end were a minor gripe, but overall, I'll say I really do love the PlayStation Portal. Yes, there is a specific use case for the Portal. It is a fully remote play device, because otherwise, it is literally DOA without Wi-Fi. But if you're going to be using the Portal in your own home, or a play 
place where you know you have good strong wi-fi connection you should have very little problems whatsoever i've really enjoyed my overall experience with the playstation portal so far and have had very little issues with it personally i would say the biggest issue is the lack of an internet browser to be able to use the playstation portal in public areas everything else i can tolerate the smaller analog sticks no big deal no bluetooth it's fine. I'll just use my wired earbuds. I've even gone ahead and bought my own protective case as well. But a simple software update that could add an internet browser during Wi-Fi connection would be such a game changer for the portability and usability of this device outside of the house. So again, I'm a big fan of the PlayStation Portal and use it on a daily basis. I've been a fan of remote play for many, many years, but it's nice to have a dedicated remote play device because I'm not having to sacrifice my other devices to enjoy my gaming away from my home. Yes, it has its limitations and hopefully Sony will address these in future updates. But again, I do love the device for what it is. Majority of my gaming is done either at the TV or at my setup, but I love using the PlayStation Portal for side missions or collectibles while in bed trying to achieve my platinum trophies. So guys, let me know in the comments section below if you have a PlayStation Portal or if you're interested in getting one. Let me know what you like and what you dislike about it or anything I might have missed in this video. Go ahead and hit that like, subscribe, and bell notification icon if you've enjoyed this video and if you want to see more videos like this real soon. Follow me over on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. And with that, we'll see you guys next time.